right, guys, let's dive into it today. Oh, I saw Thomas, you're coming on audio. What's happening, man? My guy, Carlos, should be in here. I'm going to I'm gonna break him back right now, get him in there. There we go. There we go. Awesome. Well, hey, guys, today uh, I want to talk a little bit about AI and specifically ways that we can leverage uh you know, leverage AI to be able to create lead gen campaigns, to create strategies, to be able to go after agents and attract agents. Uh, you know, the, the big emphasis, you know, whenever I start and, and I'm talking about AI and, and really any sense of the imagination, uh, you know, the big thing that I like to emphasize is that artificial intelligence is an incredibly powerful tool, but it's only as powerful as that brain and that human intelligence that it's being matched with. So, uh, you know, when I think about AI and what's possible, I want you to think of efficiency. I want you to think of ideation. I want you to think of data and analysis, uh, you know, really being able to leverage a tool that can handle most of the heavy lifting so that you can take action quicker. So, uh, you know, talking a little bit about, you know, personalization at scale, AI enables you to yeah. deliver highly personalized content. It allows you to deliver recommendations. Uh, you know, the thing I like too, from an analytics standpoint, uh, you know, what I'm doing and what I'm going to cover today is ways that you can use AI to create a campaign, a specific you know, Google ad campaign. And one of the things, uh, Carlo, let me see. Is I'm it... in already. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, cool. All right. Um, All right. But, you know, one of the things that a tool like ChatGPT does is it allows us to create uh, content and create information that, that we need and get access to that data quicker. So uh, an example of this is, I went to ChatGPT and here's my prompt. I'm looking to run a Google ad campaign as a mortgage broker targeting new purchase, new home purchase leads. What is the best city to target in terms of search volume in the state of California? So what this did is it now provided me with areas. Where do I want to target? Who are the people I'm looking to go after? So now, you know, it's what this has done is it's identified a list of, of areas um, in terms of markets, in terms of search volume, people who are are looking, you know, looking for, you know, looking for homes. But the thing that this allows you to do is you as a loan officer, you're understanding, okay, you know, uh, maybe I don't want to target homes in, uh, you know, in Los Angeles or in San Francisco, you know, maybe Bakersfield is a better market to go after, you know, from an affordability standpoint, we're going to have higher conversion rates, you know, same with, uh, you know, with Anaheim, or, you know, Fresno, the kind of central California. So this is giving me from a targeting perspective, who are the people that I want to go after and how can I identify, uh, you know, how can I identify, uh, you know, these people? The next thing I want to do and when I'm using a tool like ChatGPT is I want to understand what are the high intent keywords um, that more importantly have low to medium competition, but still generate at least 100 search volumes per month in these local markets. So one thing that stands out here is city specific long tail keywords. So first time home buyer programs in, uh, you know, Anaheim or Fresno or Bakersfield, you know, best mortgage lenders in Bakersfield. You see the types of keywords that are designed to capture local customers, local clients. Um, you know, these are high intent keywords, people who are looking for affordable homes, best mortgage, you know, down payment assistance. These are terms that people are using because they want to take action. And that's what we're looking for. We want people to be able to take action. So I give you this as an example, you know, the way that you can quickly create your strategy. You can quickly create the information and gather the information that you're looking for when you're building out, you know, a lead gen campaign, uh, you know, kind of circling it back into AI and what you need to know and how you need to be leveraging it. You know, one of the most important things that I tell anyone that's starting to leverage AI in their business, it's the power of prompts. The information that you put into a tool like ChatGPT is going to allow you to get the information out that you're seeking. Uh, you know, a couple of the things that I like doing. So, you know, is writing in the tones of people. So I'm saying, okay, this is, you know, these keywords are great. 
now create corresponding ad copy for a Google ad campaign that speaks in the tone of, let's say, we'll say Tom Ferry. It's a real estate, you know, business coach. One thing about Tom Ferry, he's a high energy, high, exp you know, ex explanation type of guy. Uh, so the tone that he's, you know, he's writing in, it's ready to buy your first, your first home. Let's make it happen. Uh, you know, get pre-approved in minutes, start now, unlock your dream home with the right mortgage, you know, a lot of exclamation points. Uh, but I share this with you because your power of prompts is going to enable you to get the information that you're out. So I was very specific. I'm looking for, uh, you know, corresponding ad copy. I'm looking to use the motivational style of Tom Ferry, and I'm aiming to engage home buyers with clarity, encouragement, expertise, which is going to get them to stop and take action. You know, by them clicking on our ad, that's what gets these people into your ecosystem. Um, let's <clears throat> come on back here. So, uh, you know, I'm going to, and I'll share this presentation so everyone has it inside the chat box. But one of the things I included on this doc is, uh, you know, here's some example chat GPT prompts, uh, you know, and, and a couple of the ways that I like using chat GPT, whether it's writing emails, responding to, you know, messages, um, I found chat GPT to be highly effective and efficient, you know, with writing emails, responding to emails. You know, one thing you got to do is kind of rewrite some of the tone. Also, you know, using it to write ad copy. You know, and I, I kind of lean back into the point that human intelligence plus artificial intelligence is what makes it pop, you know, what makes it incredibly effective. So if you're using this to write ad copy or write blogs that you're going to post on your website. It needs the human element because that's what's going to uh, really create the lift for you in, in, in your particular business. Uh, so another example of a, you know, a prompt, this is an, an ad. So writing headlines for ads, you know, one thing you want to keep in mind when you are, um, you know, when you're in, let's, let's use this. Come back over here. I'm going to change a little bit using the tone of a, write me a short email, congratulating Paula first time home and reaching, make it informal. So this is an email that I'm sending to a customer. You can see here, you know, I'll follow up, you know, ask for the referral and watch what I do here is I'm going to, I'm going to give it some feedback. So I'm giving, you know, AI, my chat GPT feedback, not good. Make sure that you close with a request for referrals and ensure that you will be following that, I get it, that I will be following up annually for our annual financial reviews. So now it's rewriting. It's given me, uh, you know, it's giving specific, uh, you know, details as it relates to the annual financial reviews and make sure that, you know, as things change, you know, so should your mortgage, we're talking about you know, referrals and asking for referrals. So this is an example of using chat GPT and giving it feedback so that we can get the information that we're seeking out of it. Um, and this, you know, really what it does is it becomes incredibly powerful when you're leveraging a tool like this to, um, you know, to write ads, to write captions, to, you know, respond to emails. Like this is all stuff that is going to uh, just create more efficiencies within your business and more efficiencies within the way you market and the way that you, you shake loose new conversations and, uh, you know, new opportunities. Let's go here. Let's talk a little bit more. So, um, <clears throat> a little bit more details, um, uh, you know, as it, as it, speaks to, uh, you know, AI and content creation. So, um, you know, you can, uh, you know, it's tailored messages, you know, there's the ability to create engaging visuals, uh, you know, just a, a, a tool like ChatGPT, you know, 
I want everyone on this call to think of chat GPT as their, you know, their personal assistant and being able to leverage, you know, a tool like this is going to help you shake loose, uh, you know, more, more conversations. Uh, I'm going to give some examples as it relates to, uh, you know, some tools, uh, you know, uh, some specific AI tools that can be leveraged within your business. So I talked a little bit about chat GPT. That's what you saw me creating those prompts on. Um, there's also Jasper. Uh, so these sorts of tools can help you with creating captions, writing blogs, uh, you know, can help you generate ideas for Asian spotlights or, you know, day in the life posts, things that you need uh, that you're trying to create to engage and attract agents. Uh, you know, copy AI can help you generate headlines, uh, engaging text snippets for your posts that can help save time from a brainstorming perspective. Uh, you know, Canvas AI features, uh, you know, from a visual tool or content tool standpoint, uh, you know, that, uh, that they allow you to, you know, leverage easy to use templates. Uh, you know, Mid Journey is another one, being able to leverage Mid Journey to, uh, you know, to be able to shake loose more, uh, you know, more conversations in, in terms of, uh, you know, from a creative standpoint, so creating original artwork, illustrations, you can use Mid Journey to help your personal brand stand out. Uh, Talk a little bit. All right. One of the things that I would, you know, tell you to when you're, you know, say you're focusing on agent attraction and recruiting agents, you know, into your ecosystem, uh, you know, your content beams and pillars. So like, you know, who are you as a loan officer, you know, helping people with their home financing needs, you know, the message that you're delivering to, uh, you know, to this audience really should be about, how you're going to help them bring more business back into their, you know, into their world, into their ecosystem. Um, so talking about the ways that you're leveraging your CRM or creating content that, you know, talks about, you know, your, your environment and, and how you engage customers before, during and after a transaction. Your job is an effective strategic partner. It's about bringing more deals back, uh, you know, to your agent partners. Um, you know, just some tips and best practices for AI-driven content creation. Uh, you know, so keep contact content authentic. Uh, you know, avoid that kind of robotic type content. Um, you know, while, uh, you know, I've mentioned this a couple of times, AI can consist in content creation, but the human editing is, is essential for authenticity. Uh, you know, show real stories. You know, the stories that, you know, reviews that you have on your Google My Business page, take that review and let me actually test that and see right here. So, all right, so let's come over here. Let me go to the reviews. All right, so leverage this review to expand on and create a story caption that can be used on social media to describe how a mortgage professional went above, actually, I got to share my screen. Sorry, guys to share how uh, a mortgage professional went, went above and beyond for a customer. All right. So the reason I give you this as an example, because what people like on social media is stories hearing stories, reading stories. So what I've done is I've taken that review and ChatGPT is expanding on it for me. It creates more of a story, you know, the headline um, from Georgia, you know, from Florida to Georgia and into their dream home all in just one week, like the emphasis behind that. So being able to use a tool like ChatGPT to repurpose reviews and content that people are sharing about you, taking that information, dropping it into an email, dropping it on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, 
this is the power of leveraging a tool like ChatGPT to create efficiencies within your business. I can tell you that you know most people, most mortgage professionals, you know people like myself, marketers, you know we're not going to be able to type up a 300 word blog in a matter of seconds like that. And that's what ChatGPT is doing for you. You know, efficiencies with marketing is going to allow you to get more done in a in a less amount of time. Uh, so it's, you know, take advantage of these sorts of tools. Think outside the box. Like if you're trying to go after real estate agents, what is your value prop message? What sets you apart? What makes you unique? You know, what are you doing to kind of differentiate yourself? Like everyone can close a loan quickly. Everyone, you know, claims to have the best rates, but think more outside the box. And what agents want are more transactions. They want more repeat and referral business. You know, so really leaning into, uh, you know, that messaging uh, with the, the campaigns and things that you're pushing out there. You're talking about, you know, your annual mortgage review system, talking about, you know, the way like the success stories that you have with your customers. And to me, this looks like you just saved a deal. This review that we have on the screen, this is a, a deal that was just saved. You know, they had to close it in a week. You know, there were some difficulties and, and you know, was able to, uh, you know, solve this, you know, solve this problem. Uh, you know, so, I, you know, the emphasis with, you know, today's talk around chat GPT and AI and various tools is that you can do a lot there, you know, leveraging a tool like chat GPT, leveraging a tool like, uh, you know, Jasper mid journey, uh, it allows you to be more efficient in your time from a marketing perspective and, and, you know, Database marketing, brand marketing is a contact sport. So what I mean by that is the more that people see you, the more that people hear you, the more that, uh, you know, you're in front of them, the more likely these people are going to be to do business with you. And ultimately, that's that's why we market. We want, want more leads, we want higher conversion, um, and that's where we can find a lot of success uh, as it relates there. Uh, let's talk a little bit more, some examples. So this is, uh, I like this example, you know, this is, uh, uh, a, you know, it explains a concept. So let's, you know, let me show you what pops up when I use this one. So I'm saying you are an excellent new home builder and you are trying to explain the home building process to a first time home buyer. They don't get it. So you provide a very good example that helps them understand what the process consists of. So let's see what chat GPT comes up with here. All right, planning a new trip. Last time it was like baking a cake. I love kind of the, the you know, the different connections that they, you know, they, they piece together here. So, uh, you know, this particular one is talking about the, the process, the planning, permits, approvals, um, but, you know, it's designing your itinerary, booking the essentials, packing and prepping, new adventure games, make it feel like, you know, feel like home, the final touches, um, you know, and this uh, is, you know, great. It's just a great example, it allows people to be able to connect and share, uh, you know, share a way to relate to the problem that you're, you know, you're trying to solve here. Um, let me go here, other things. Okay. Uh, all right. Give me a sec. We talked kind of real life examples. All right. Let's talk a little bit about ways that you can leverage uh, AI for lead generation campaigns. So I talked a little bit earlier about Google ads. So situationally, you can use it for your ad copy. You can use it for keyword research. You can use it to identify high intent keywords. You know, high intent keywords are people who are raising their hand saying, I'm looking for help. You know, one thing I want you to keep in mind when you're leveraging a tool like Google ads, uh, you know, those are people who are going to a search engine that are raising their hand and saying, I'm looking for help. I'm looking for this type of help. Uh, so we know that their intent is already in the interest phase. So when we're using keywords that are more specific around, um, you know, best mortgage broker, top rated mortgage broker, top reviewed, um, you know, city specific, you know, localized keywords. That means people are looking in their backyard. They're looking for someone they could speak with, someone they can meet with, someone that can help them take action. 
Uh, so using a tool like ChatGPT, you can you know create efficiencies with creating the ad copy you need, the you know the high intent keywords. Uh, you know, I the thing that I like most about AI is it it lays the bed. You know, it, it lays the foundation so that you can then go and adjust based on what your market knowledge is sharing with you. Uh, so I like you know I like it from that perspective. I like you know the ability to uh, you know to be able to to drum up uh, and effectively and efficiently write new campaigns. Uh, let's go here. So, you know, some of the benefits of AI for ad campaigns is, you know, AI helps us generate the, you know, the tailored content, the specific segments. Um, it allows us to personalize. Uh, let me see this. It allows us to personalize, um, you know, personalization to, a, to improve click-through rate. So your click-through rate on an ad is, how many people see your ad stop and take action? So let me use an example. What ad, what improvements to this ad copy should I make to improve my click through rate and create a sense of urgency? Urgency creates action. So let me go up here. I'm going to go with this description. I'll share my screen here in a sec. All right. So what I did is I specifically said to ChatGPT is what improvements to this ad copy should I make to improve my click-through rate and create a sense of urgency? Remember, as I mentioned, you're creating a sense of urgency creates action. Action creates opportunities. Uh, you know, so when you're creating this sort of campaign or you're thinking about running a Google ad campaign, remember, you know, you're when you're spending ad dollars on a lead generation campaign, you want people who are already in the mindset of, of getting ready to buy. Uh, you know, and you got to think the different channels where you run an ad. An ad on Facebook, they're a little bit further up. Yeah, you know, they didn't go to Facebook or Instagram looking to buy a home. They went there to be social. So their intent while they might be interested in buying a home, you know, their intent of why they're on the platform was not to go and buy a home. So it's different. Someone who went to Google, they're looking for more information. They're looking to start the process. You know, someone who's on Zillow or Trulia, Realtor.com, they're in the, you know, decision phase. They're looking at homes. They're looking at properties. They're looking to go meet with an agent, go see homes. Uh, so, you know, with this ad strategy, what you're doing here is we're trying to create a sense of urgency. We're trying to improve click-through rates. Um, you know, one of the things that we got to be careful, and I'll share this just from a compliance, you know, perspective, is we can't guarantee low rates. So, you know, we just need to be, uh, you know, we need to be careful with what's being communicated there, but being able to, you know, pre-approval in minutes, like that sense of urgency, create a pre-approval in minutes, uh, you know, low down payment options. Uh, you know, we're using chat GPT to, you know, to create that sense of urgency, to create clear call, uh, clear, clear calls to action, CTAs, calls to action. Uh, you know, so this and, and being able to leverage a tool like, chat GPT to create your ad copy to, to, to help from a research perspective uh, is going to enable you to get a campaign live quicker. Uh, a tool that I would, you know, if everyone, anyone's looking to do some research and, and looking to see what their competitors are up to, there is a platform called SpyFu. Your first month you can get for free. Um, you know, so being able to leverage a tool, it might be, it might be a week, but your first, you know, initial time on the platform would be free. Uh, and let me give you an example. So, uh, I'm looking at, I want to see, you know, Rocket Mortgage. They're spending, uh, you know, they've, they're, they're, they're spending 1.2 million, you know, a month on Google ads. So let's take a look at what are they currently doing? Let's look at their PPP, PPC overview. Um, this is going to give me some examples of, you know, what are their top recommendations? What are the keywords that are performing the best? That's interesting right now, home equity loans you know right now might be a good time if you're looking to you know go after that particular market um let's see you got a message oh yeah john here let me do that all right there you go um 
But yeah, so, you know, this tool allows you to look at, you know, what are some of the best buys in this, you know, this current market. It's interesting the amount of great buys they're, they're seeing as it relates to these equity types, home equity types of loans. Um, another thing I would look at, so we're here, uh, let's look at their core keyword list. So this is the core keywords that are generating the majority of their traffic. So you can see here, and it gives you some good data. Uh, let's go here. Let's go back to this overview. What are some other things that we can tell from this? Uh, one thing I like to do too is look at where are there certain increases. Like where you know where did their spend go up? You know, so these last couple of months, their you know their clicks, their volume has gone down. So let's look at what were some of the keywords that were converting you know this month over last month. The other thing is, what are the keywords and ad copy that they're using in these months? That's you know ads that were on in October, but uh, remained on in November. You know, because you could see as they're decreasing spend, they wouldn't be decreasing spend off of. Um, ads that you know are performing well. So this is going to allow me to look at what are some of those keywords that are you know that are performing best right now. What are the you know the ad copy that's performing best? Um, you can kind of see you know with with Rocket a lot of their you know their messaging is you know it's compare options you know it's fast powerful completely online get started you know their whole thing is a click of a button you know push button get mortgage which I think to the consumer it's pretty misleading but hey. You know, they spend a ton of money on marketing, which gives us a lot of great intel that we can decipher and use to be able to create strategies to, to help shake loose more business. Um, let's see here. All right. Uh, you know, a couple other things that we could talk about. Just other ways you can leverage chat GPT. So we, you know, content creation, personalizing messages, customer support. So uh, AI, there's the AI voice tools now. So being able to set up an AI voice tool for people who are calling in your office, you know, that AI voice is a new feature we've just released within the EMC CRM. So that's a good one there too. Uh, you know, content for email marketing, market research, uh, you know, content curation. We we talked a little bit about you know keyword research, um, A/B testing. So if you're going to run an ad, what are you testing? My strategy with A/B testing is about first you test the copy. So that's the ad copy that you're using, your headlines in the ads. Second, you test the creative. So that's the, the static image, carousel images, uh, you know, video. What is the creative you're using both in the ad and on the landing page? Uh, and then the the you know the third step to A/B testing is going to be your landing page. You know, do you only have a video there? Do you have static graphics? What's your headlines? You know, what's the the call to action button copy that you know that that's being leveraged there? Uh, you know, so when you're building a Google ad campaign, you're building a uh, you know, uh, uh, a meta ad campaign leaning into chat GPT will help you get your ads up. It'll help you create some efficient, some efficiencies, uh, you know, in terms of, of, you know, launching campaigns to generate leads. Let me go here. Let's see a couple other things I wanted to cover. Let's go. Eight. All right. Where is that? Okay. Um, last thing I see here, or last thing I want to, you know, just kind of run through is, uh, you know, remember the the power of AI is, uh, you know, it's it's. It's designed to allow you to work quicker, work smarter and not harder. Think about on the, of the over the course of your day, what are some of the things that slow you down? You know, what are some of the things that, uh, you know, uh, customer facing, customer support, responding to emails, you know, your ideation things, your, you know, what is the, the perfect loan process? You know, what are those touch points look like? Tools like AI, 
while they might not give you the final answer of, of everything you're looking for, they can help you reach that, you know, help you get 90% of the way much quicker. So you can go from zero to 90% done. And then that last 10% is the human element which is the most important part because you're going to polish it off, make sure it sounds like your tone, your voice, you know, information is, is accurate as, as, you know, as given present today. Um, but a lot, you know, a lot of value and a lot of you know information that, that can be derived, you know, from a, a, a tool like this. Um, I want to spend just the next, you know, 10 minutes or so just, you know, off, uh, open office hours um, you know, talk a little bit about your business, what you're currently doing, what you're trying to do. I'm going to call on you know, some new, some new folks. Kevin, you there? I think you're muted right now, Kevin. All right, well, we're going to keep it going. John, let's talk a little bit about your business. How are you marketing yourself today? What, you know, what are you currently doing from a marketing perspective? I think you're muted too. You there, John? All right, who's going to be our brave soul? Who's going to be our brave soul? Robert, you there? I am here and unmuted. All right, finally. No. Uh, talk to me a little bit about your business. How are you marketing yourself today? What seems to be working? What are you trying to accomplish? Let's uh, just have a conversation around that. So one thing that's honestly helped me all year is that this time last year, I sent Christmas cards to all the customers I did loans for in the last five years. Yeah. And... Um, I started getting calls January and I just got a call today, you know, 10 months later from someone. So um, uh, I need to work on my Christmas card list. Uh, uh, came over from retail, but was working at um, Guaranteed Rate Affinity where I was the in-house mortgage guy. So mm -hmm. uh, trying to transition into um, getting more leads. I went on United Wholesale and I signed up for the boost program where you pay like 35 bucks a lead. Yeah. Uh, problem is when I call them, they've already you know talked to someone, and then um, also signed up for freerate.com. So uh, right now, what's kept me afloat is uh, purchases from realtors that I've met and yeah. past customers. But I need to evolve into getting um, businesses the way traditional mortgage brokers do. Do you uh, like what's your connection rate with the leads that you're buying? Like, how many, like, say out of 10 leads, how many leads are you actually speaking with? Um, that's a good, interesting point. Uh, there was one that was a, the live transfers are, are more efficient. Uh, mm -hmm. Free rate has one where they do a live transfer. I talked to the guy, he, uh, I, I followed up with him a couple days later. He had 20 phone calls, so he was confused. He originally wanted a, a half million dollar line of credit in yep. California. And um, uh, last time I talked to him, just like everyone else, he said he was going to wait till after the election. So I was going to wait till after the Fed's announcement today and call him back this weekend and just see if he wants to do something. So that yeah. was, uh, I'd say, one out of 10. Um, another one that I talked to, uh, again, it was a live transfer, but she wanted a reverse mortgage with no payments, but didn't want to reverse mortgage. So that was a waste of, of money. And yeah. the other ones I've reached out to and they haven't returned my call because again, they're flooded. Even though it says exclusive, they're getting 20 calls. Yeah. How does that work? Was it uh, exclusive? You're buying an exclusive lead, but there's others selling those leads to other vendors too? Supposedly, or, or they're just labeling it as exclusive and then they're selling it as well. You know, very... All, everyone that I've gotten a hold of, um, none of them are like, oh, I was waiting for you to call. You're the only person I've I've talked to. It's it's always competing. So I've had to cut my margin down to one and a half points, maybe even one and a quarter points just to stay competitive. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things I would talk, you know, I would, I would make sure that you're doing is these leads, make sure... Um, you know, make sure you're putting them into the CRM. You've got automation that's, you know, that that's keeping you in front of them, especially, you know, the people that are like, hey, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait for things to cool off. You don't know if that's, you know, a week, two weeks, you know, five months, six months, 
uh, you know, so making sure you get that database and you're, you're putting them in, are you using EMC CRM or Bonzo? What CRM do you use? Uh, I used Bonzo before. Um, and I, honestly, I've got both of them uh, set up. I haven't really used any efficiently. With Bonzo, I had my past customers and realtors on there and I haven't really done anything. And with the, um, with the other one, the, um, I, I've got it set up. I got a web page set up, but yeah, I, I need to figure out how to automate it because a lot of these customers, I'll get back to you could mean two days, two weeks, or three months, you know. And what I'll tell you is the fortune is in the follow up. With any lead generation that you're doing, the fortune is always in the follow up. So, uh, you know, if if you're available on Tuesday, join the EMC CRM meetings that Jonathan holds. And and if there's anything we do to support you getting your database in there, you know, web hooks or, you know, turning on any of the corresponding campaigns, um, you know, definitely, especially since you're spending money, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're paying money to buy leads. We want to make sure that you've got as many systems in place to be able to convert there. Right. My, my main thing, like I said, is just... Um... I've always been a one-on-one -on -one type of person and I need to do more of a shotgun approach mm -hmm. and, you know, throw a bigger net out. Are you talking about like shotgun approach, trying to go after, uh, going after agents? Uh, both agents and, you know, refis. I've been doing mostly purchases now, switched over a little bit to, to refis. Uh, just um, need to remind the agents and remind the customers that I still do mortgages so that they can get a hold of me. Uh, yeah. This um, this past customer, I sent the Christmas card to. He didn't remember where the card was, so he called the agent. Agent called me and said, "Hey, Craig's trying to get a hold of you." So it it worked indirectly. He didn't keep the card, but I was top of mind. Yeah, so, yeah. One of the things I would tell you too uh, is is leveraging you know it's uh, lists of agents you know and being able to you know identify who are these top producing agents and then being a little bit like your approach it's like friend request them on facebook connect with them on linkedin you yep. know uh, you know then you're you're after they've accept your friend request like send them a nice like hey you know like message thanks for connecting with me here you know how's business going like you know the if you're going to try and cast a wide net there's tools like you know, LinkedIn AI or sales connector that can help, help automate some of that flow. Um, you know, but to your point, like it's a contact sport. You got to be contact. You got to be in front of, you know, the more that you're doing this, the, the stronger those relationships will be. And, and even with the realtors, uh, you know, they, um, their relationships come and go, like they're really tight with someone and then something happens. So you just got to, I hate to say it. It's like dating. You just have to be there as the backup friend in case something happens and, and just be able to catch them. You got to be out there, man. You got to put yourself out there. Yep. You know, it's like fishing. If your line's not in the sea, you're not going to hook anything. Yep. I love that. I love that. Cool. Well, um, yeah. So, I mean, just, you know, kind of summarizing Carlos, since you're here, you know, any questions you have from a marketing perspective, anything I can help you guys, you and Thomas with? I think you're muted right now. There you are. Yeah. Uh, so I have a question. So I've been dealing with a couple of agencies and stuff like that. And it's, it's kind of hard to hear you. Uh, I'm not sure if you're on speakerphone or something. You there? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, I gotcha. All right. So, uh, yeah, I have a couple of questions. So it's Kind of hard, like to talk to like certain agents or like certain people. So, so, for example, I'm working with a lot of Hispanic people. Yep. And uh, you know, like some of them don't really understand like the terms of English and stuff like that. So, uh, I'm I'm trying to find a way because I've been like working with Tony for quite a while. And I've been trying to find a way to uh, like be more clear with what I say. Well, trying to like try to get my points across, you know. Yeah. So, what, what thing you could, uh, yeah, I mean, one thing you could do is, I mean, like a tool like ChatGPT. It's like, what are the pain points and emotions that people are feeling in today's uh, housing market? Like, because if you like people, you know, emotions could be fear. It could be, you know, uh, 
just, I mean, like, like, like a lack of understanding, like, you know, seeking education, like, you know, just kind of the emotions and experience and feelings that people go through buying a home and being able to leverage a tool like ChatGPT. And let me use an example. What are the emotional reactions, emotional experiences that prospective home buyers deal with when going through the purchase, the process of purchasing a home. Let me see what comes up when I type this into chat GPT. Yeah, so it's like, you know, excitement and anticipation, anxiety and overwhelm, uncertainty and doubt, frustration, you know, impatience. Um, so I share this with you, Carlo, because when you're trying to find ways to connect with people, you know, when you connect with them on a human level and you, you know, you empathize around the emotions and, and the feelings that they're, you know, that they have in this process, you're listening to them. And because ultimately what you're trying to do is you're trying to develop rapport. And when you develop rapport, you know, that's where people put down their fence and they start to share and open up and give you the information. Because what you're trying to gather from these people when you're, you know, you're buying a home or you're trying to, you know, uh, work a lead for someone who's buying a home, it's like, they got to open up their entire financial picture. So they got to trust you, you know, uh, uh, they got to feel confident that you know what you're doing. You know, they're leaning into your expertise so that you know what loan product's going to fit them best. So, uh, you know, with what you're kind of sharing there and how you're you're trying to connect with these audiences, uh, ChatGPT can can help you from a persona perspective, and ultimately, I think that can help you have better conversations. Thank you very much. Awesome, cool guys. Well, you know, uh, as a reminder, today's conversation, you know, it's about ChatGPT. You know, it's about using systems, using tools, using. Uh, efficiencies to get your name out there. Remember, mortgage marketing is a contact sport. The more people see you, hear you, uh, you know, the more you're in front of them, uh, ultimately, the more business you're going to do. So uh, remember, every Tuesdays, we have our CRM training. Every Thursdays, we've got marketing mechanics. Think of these as marketing office hours. We're here to help coach and support and give you the uh, at night, you know, the advice and strategy and, and things that you guys need. If you have not yet signed up for our social media content calendar, go to the emcway.com and you can sign up there. Um, otherwise, have a great rest of your week and I will see everyone next week. Take care.